Hello, Sarah Lovecraft. Hi, Sam. <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm really excited for this hour. I was thinking yesterday, I was telling folks that we were doing this and then like got that sort of like giddy excitement when you're just like, why is that not happening right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So somehow that hour has arrived. I was telling Sarah, I was like, what, where did the today go? It's, it's gone. It, yeah. The whole thing, gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I just, I just did a live with Danielle over in Hardwired. And she was like, so what are you going to do between these lives? And I was like, well, I'm going to feed everybody. I'm going to do the dishes. I'm going to work on the laundry. And guess how many of those things I did? <laughs> Maybe none of them. <laughs> Maybe, maybe none of those things happen, but it's because the time is just like, this day is flying by. I, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it all happened this weekend. Maybe it won't. <laughs> yes. maybe. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm, we are live from the Sam's Beach Shop page today, but we're trying out going live to multiple places. So you might be seeing this on Sarah's channel or on the Sam's Beach Shop channel. I think I'm gonna like unofficially designate that like our like party is gonna be on the Sam's Beach Shop page stream. So if you want to like be with everyone else, head on over there. But you're yeah. good wherever you are, no stress. Yep. We just wanted to make sure folks knew that this stream was happening, that we're doing like a little bonus class. Well, the bonus for Sarah. This is the Sam's Beach Shop class this week. We're very <laughs> lucky to have Sarah. So I don't know the last time we were we got to do this. It feels it literally feels like an eternity, Sarah. It really does. And honestly, I know it hasn't been that long, but it does feel like forever. Like I'm seeing your face and I'm just like, I have missed you so much. Cause it does. It feels like it's been so long. But the good news <laughs> is is that we get to get together again on Tuesday. So we get everybody gets double Sam and Sarah. So Goodness. Because I don't think today is going to be enough for me. <laughs> no, definitely not. No, 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 no. This is just going to, this is just going to like, this is the gateway drug into like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, into like all of the awesomeness. <laughs> yeah. I also realized I totally didn't send a text out to my folks yet. So I'll do that in a second. <gasps> I didn't do that um, either. Darn it. I forgot. I'm also like not very fast at doing it. So <laughs> maybe once like, once you start to do the project, I'll let you take over for a second and do that. Um. But basically, Sarah's has come up with a really awesome design using the May Sam's Bead Box. It's so cool. I just, there's something really special about this. I find just like very like, you really like got the essence of what we were going for with the box. Yeah, I think so too. So I think when folks see the bracelet, they're gonna be like, oh, that's the theme. Like you really brought together the theme and the eclecticness, eclecticness yes. of like the boho travels idea that we were going for. Yeah, yeah, that was definitely my inspiration. Like this box, this box kind of makes itself. And Danielle and I were talking about this earlier. Like she's got a favorite box. I think her favorite box was the November box. And she said, but mm. this box is the rival to that November box. Like that's how she feels about this box mm -hmm. too. And I'm kind of feeling the same way. This is right up there in my top three favorite Sam Speed boxes. This color palette is... It's everything. It's everything. It's not too pastel. It's not too bold. It's this happy medium that just, it, the beads just kind of create themselves. You know, the, the designs create themselves because yeah. of the way these beads go together. So well done you. I mean, it's, it's gorgeous. Absolutely. You, stunning. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, would you show us a little bit of kind of the palette that you, of the box when you flip your camera around? Cause I think, I don't know if I've shown the box that much yet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got everything right here. So I can show you whatever you want to see. You want me to go ahead and do that? We can get. Yeah. And I might be slightly oh. distracted. Uh, That's okay. Trying to get <laughs> message out. <laughs> I wish I could just hand you my phone and be like, here, do mine too. I know. <laughs> it's so much easier. <laughs> okay. So let's take a little look see at all of the goodies here in Sam's box. So. I'll try to go, I'll try to go quickly so we don't spend too much time on this part so we can really focus on the design. But I I do want to to point out some of the things that were my favorites that I I didn't use in this project, but not because I didn't love them, because oh, this box is so pretty. First of all, there are some empty baggies here, guys. So just know that like I'd used 
I've, I've already used some things. <laughs> My favorites when <laughs> elements of the box just pop up in random places throughout the Sarah Lovecraft universe. Yeah. I love that see it, universe. Like a hardware <laughs> project and there's, oh, yeah. there's some little crystals. I know those. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I'm going to start right out with my very favorite thing just because I can. And here it is. It's the Jasper. Oh, this. And this is, it's more than just these beads. It's the shape. It's everything about these that just make me so happy. What is it like the, is it the whole like palette of them and like the, I'm so curious, like what, is it the shape? What I'm, I need to know I, more. I think it's a combination of everything. The shape for starters just makes me all types of happy because you can stack these up and they lay on your wrist as a bracelet so nicely. Like they're, they're perfectly shaped for a bracelet and there's enough of them here that you can make an entire bracelet. And if you have a tiny little teeny beanie twig wrist like me, you'd actually have some beads left over that you can make earrings with if you wanted to. But I don't know. I think maybe it is the palette, the color palette that's here. Cause you've got like this, this kind of brick red with the sky blue, but then you also have like the gray and the tan and just, I don't know. There's something about this that is so different. And I think maybe that's what it is, is that it's a color palette that I probably wouldn't put together. Um, but I'm glad that it exists. You know, it's just so pretty. They're so, so pretty. Uh, let's see. Some of my other favorite things. Well, the whole box is pretty darn awesome. But let's, let's look at these. I love these. So I used a couple of these in the design. So there are a couple of the purple ones that are missing. This is the pastel rainbow luster mix. These are super cool. I, I don't think I have one mix of colors together. Yeah, they're really, really fun. And not only that, but I don't think I have anything else that is this shape with that texture on it. So these are like brand new to me. Me too. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> gonna, <laughs> those, were, those are just one of those like random finds and that Rachel and I find sometimes that we just scoop up. Yeah. Because they're like, we, we always want to infuse some of those really special elements in the bead box. We often find like new shapes just for the bead box. Well, speaking of, these little babies are awesome. And that's a really cool little hexagon shape. I love these. Isn't they're awesome. so, so pretty. They're like so small and cute. They are. They're like little babies. And they're like little, you know, it's like a little pond. Each one is like a little pond. They're just so cool. This box is just cool. I mean, everything in it is just really super cool. Thank you so much. I agree. I also really like this, how this box turned out. Yeah. It's really awesome. Those little lust... I, it's the luster. I think maybe it's the luster that mm -hmm. I'm obsessed with in this box. These, this was what I created the entire bracelet around were these, these luster, let's see, bluestone purple luster fire polish facets. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest with you. I'm not even a purple person, but there is some like purple and pink are things that I'm, I'm trying to incorporate more in my life. That's hence the big pink fingernails, but the purple with the luster makes this so much easier for me to design with. Cause it's not like just like a straight up purple. This you can mix with copper. This you can mix with bronze. You can mix this with silver. Like the luster makes it a little bit easier to work with, I think, and just makes it like a grown up purple. So I I'm in love with those. These are also one of my favorites. These little peanuts. I love these little peanut babies. Look at them. They are truly little peanuts. They're and the so way cute. The way they go together is so satisfying. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they kind of like lock together. Yeah. I, like, I don't come from the sea beating world. I know they're very involved in the sea beating world, but even as a non sea beater, they're very appealing to mm -hmm. me because yep. I like center drilled things and how they kind of yes differently than anything else in your stash. Mm hmm. And then you have you have all everybody's favorites in here. You got owls and elephants. I mean, come on! You were like trying to. I don't know what you were doing. You're and you're more owls. To... I see more owls right there. <laughs> you yeah. You've you've checked all the boxes for every human being on the planet ever. I'm just saying, like this this box does it for everybody. Because you got an elephant. You got the owls. You got two different kinds of owls. So you have like your little sassy owls, but you have your whimsical owls. And like, yes, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. We, we gotta keep things fun, Sarah. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, now I'm showing more than one thing at a time because you know, I can't. There's a fish. 
I didn't even realize this was a fish. Yeah, it's a fishy. <laughs> oh my, he needs to go in my bracelet too. Oh, I like the fish. I didn't even, I just thought he was a cool purple bead. He's a fish. <laughs> Look at me. I'm so behind. These, these are amazing. This is incredible. Yeah, like, the tear cast this month, we did the, the big feather. I think it's the biggest tear cast we've ever had in the box. And then a little dragonfly charm with it, which I think you I have, also used in the bracelet, maybe? I did, yeah. So the, the dragonfly is missing because he's over in the pile of stuff I'm using. I have to touch these. They they touch the same way they look, and that is so intriguing and wonderful to me. So these are like little stones. These are like little pebbles. What are these? These are check glass pillow stone Picasso. The texture on these makes me all types of happy. Those those are something that I could have also worked with, like the the Sam's Fave March box because all the the blues and browns. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And Ooh. so like yeah, that, they, they they those sort that sort of bead with like the texture and oh, it just speaks to me. Rhodonite. These are so pretty too. And see, like this is the kind of pink I can I can get behind. A <laughs> an electric pink. Electric pink, obviously, but like <laughs> this neutral pink that's just so soothing and soft. Maybe that's what it is about this color palette. Maybe it's I'm like so, I'm I'm high energy, but maybe I'm this like brings me down a notch or something. I don't know. Well, you know how they say like the TV shows that appeal to you are often are the ones that represent things like you don't have in your life. <laughs> oh, I'm feeling that. Yeah. <laughs> I, was so I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and so what we were going for for this box was like, as like we wanted color, but we wanted to mute. We wanted muted colors. Yeah. Because we've done brights. We've done lots of different brights in the past. And we wanted to kind of mix it up and do something that just felt softer, calmer. Mm -hmm. It is. It's very calm. It really, really is, which I am totally wrecking with my insane above the bar energy, but it really is a really calming. And you've included like the calming colors because you've got this beautiful like teal blue going on in here. That's like maybe an unexpected, but like, I don't, there's just some serenity here. You nailed it. You nailed it. You got it. It's a calm, a calm box. But not only that, it's a it's a palette that's easy to work with. I think mm -hmm. I don't think that people are going to look at this and be like stumped. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like because everything here, somebody's going to find a color here, whether you're a teal person, a blue person, a purple person, a pink person. Like you've pretty much made it easy for anybody to to find something in here as a good starting point. I'm in love with these little sassy babies. Look at those. Yeah, we did like, I think, what, five pairs? We thought it'd be fun to like, so you could just, if you wanted, just to rattle off a bunch of simple earrings. That we, yeah, folks I love, love them. Like when, when you're like showing off earrings, folks love those sorts of symbols. That's like the first thing people are often drawn to. Yeah. And like, they're, they're right there. You could do five like awesome pairs of earrings that are adorable. Or six. Or you six. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Look how cute they are. So yeah, we just found that shape. I, I love it. Isn't it cute? Yeah, I really, really love them. They're so cute. They have little flowers on their bodies. Yes, yes, yes. All the yeses. Okay, so this is kind of an over, overview, but there are things that are missing that you guys are going to see that are in the bracelet. So, like, there is a couple of, like, let's see. I'll just go ahead and bring them over here. So, these little check glass, these are not in the pile, but they are in the bracelet. And I'm obsessed with the both of them. I need everything in the world in this weird color. What is that? And where can I find more oh, of it? Oh, it's that? the color for you. It's, it's. Okay, I'm on it. Sarah, I'm on it. Okay. Yeah, it's like a rose. I don't know what it is. It's like rose gold meets copper with like Picasso tan. And just, it makes me happy. And it looks really good with my hair. <laughs> You have talked about like those like <laughs> soft oranges to me in the past. So this makes yep. sense to me. Yeah. I'm really, really drawn to them. It's weird because it's not really like my my color palette, like my go-to is red, black, and white. But this is this is that thing that just I'm always drawn to. It's so pretty. All right, let's make something. I would love to. Can I throw in like just a few? Yeah, yeah. This is your uh, show. You do it. I'm just, I'm just, you know. Well, you know yeah. I'm not listening to you talk, right? So like, <laughs> but I figure I might as well go ahead and answer some. Like we always get some common questions. 
So this is the May box. So if folks want this box, I think we, we do have extras and you can always, and you can message the Sam's Beach Shop page and we will add you to our list we've got going. So just go to the Sam's Beach Shop, hit message or email us. You can always email us, hello at samspeedshop.com. We, I, start, I guess the date to mark down is Tuesday is our like bead box celebration live sale. So we have extras of, I think, everything Sarah just showed. If you just want to grab a few of those elements, or if you have the box and want to get a few more of something, that is Tuesday at, oh gosh, five o'clock Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. That's like, that tends to be one of our busy live sales days because folks come and get extras from the box. So things like those like new owl shapes we got in a few colors and all those sorts of things are Tuesday. Then lastly is if you want to like join the Sam's Beadbox fun, you can join, I think through, it's May 20th today. <laughs> Just we I did have to remind myself. And you have through June 9th if you want to subscribe to the box and get the June box. And I super recommend joining because we've got, uh, a really fun collection of some summer boxes ahead of us. I think you're going to really enjoy and the best price is always getting it as part of the subscription. So I think that's all the details. All the links are in uh, this video. So check those out and let us know if you have any questions, but I'm passing the floor back to Sarah because she's got <laughs> a really great design and I'm sick of talk and I, I can't hear <laughs> my voice this much. Okay. Everybody stop for a second. Can, can we talk about the picture that you made? <laughs> Did you see it? I don't I know just, if I can stop because I, I made it just, way too late. I'm I, just now seeing it. How stinking cute are we? Look <laughs> at us. I love it. Sam Sam sends me a message and he was like, take some fun selfies. And I was like, um, okay. <laughs> and I took a bunch. I love that one. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm so glad you got to appreciate that. You rock. You rock. Okay. <laughs> So let's let's make something, shall we? Okay, no. I need a I need a copy of that. Can you send me just like a copy of that? Just 100%. that picture. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, one thing I didn't I didn't show was the little we talked about it, but the little dragonfly. The Tierra Cast Dragonfly. I'm gonna use him in my bracelet. Yay, awesome. And then these guys, whoops. Oh, I'm just going to dump everything out so we don't have any beads to play with because they're all going to go in the floor. These as well. Those are so pretty. So we're going to save those and use those for earrings at the end. So we're going to do a little set. If I can salvage the beads here. Hold on. All right. So we're going to make a bracelet that has a little bit of everything in it, but the core of this bracelet is some nylon cords. So I actually use Eslon for this. I love Eslon and Belon. I know that the, the world in the world, there is a thing called Celon. I honestly don't know what all the differences are. All I know is that it is nylon cord. I have no idea what the size is, but the Eslon comes in a bunch of different colors and the Belon comes in a handful of colors as well. The Belon you can get from Beadalon. That's why it's Belon. Um, the Eslon, uh, you can get it in a million different places. Um, and it does have the widest color varieties but they're both basically the same i feel like the difference with the uh, between the eslon and the belon just if you're curious is the belon has a little bit more of a stiffer texture to it not a lot but it's enough that when you tie knots with it it's a little bit more grippy whereas the eslon tends to be very very slippery um so nylon correct yeah it's just twisted nylon and i know that there is something else to it but i just don't know enough about it to know what it is all i know is that it's lightweight and it's really really easy to work with and this time of year when the weather starts to get really hot I am really drawn to like fabric and cord over things like chain and, you know, and heavy, big, bulky beads, mm. just because I don't want my jewelry to make me sweat, but I still want to be, I still want to wear jewelry. You know, I don't want the heat to, to keep me from wearing my favorite things. So I, a lot of times we'll go with something like the Belon as the core of something because it's so lightweight and it's, it's really breathable and airy to wear. Um, I don't know how other people feel about it. It might just be, you know, it might just be a me thing, but it also adds a really great pop of color to whatever. And it comes in. Yeah, a I love the color selections it comes in. 
Sarah's yeah. been telling me what, what sorts of things I need to get for the shop. She's been helping me out, picking out some like different wires that are coming to the shop. And yeah. it's so helpful to kind of see what, because uh, I have I have pretty much only used wire. So it's really helpful to kind of to have these sorts of options available. Yeah. Um, to kind of expand what the poss possible combinations are. Oh yeah. And you can always take things like this and like for me, for instance, like wire is my, that's my love language. That's the number one thing I use, but I like to mix things up a little bit, but I don't want to mix things up and make it harder for myself. So when I look at Eslon, I look for designs where I'm either like braiding or knotting or just stringing. So you don't have to look at it and think, oh, now I have to learn a whole new, a whole new skill set but also you can incorporate it with the other things that you're using. So like we are going to do a little bit of wire wrapping. We're going to do some wire wrapped loops and we're going to mix that with this. So, you know, like Sam said, it just kind of helps you expand your horizons a little bit just to see what other options are out there. So uh, as far as it, the measurement of this is concerned, everybody's bracelets are going to be a little bit different just because everybody needs a different length of this. But you want to have at least 18 inches, maybe a little bit more like 24 inches. We're going to fold it in half. So just know that whatever length you choose, you need enough of it to fold it in half and still be able to use it for at least three fourths of the length of your overall bracelet. So we're going to start with a loop on the end and the loop is actually going to be part of our clasp. So we're going to use some of those little peanut beads and if you watched my live earlier today, I did something very similar with a bracelet where I used seed beads to make a little loop to accommodate a button. That's exactly what we're going to do. But we're going to use the little peanuts and the peanut beads, like I mentioned before, they're really satisfying to work with because of the way they sit together. So I'm going to my cord ready here and I'm going to thread on several of these. I don't know how many. Um that the number of these is not nearly as important as the size of the loop that you make. So I'm going to thread all of these on here and then we'll take a look at, at the loop size versus our button. Cause not everybody is going to have the same size button either. And I do want to mention the button that I'm using is a Tierra cast button. Yeah. Just, I noticed that. I thought that was such a great pick. And yeah. It's one I haven't seen before. I, I have a few in the shop with the, of the Tierra cast buttons and I hadn't seen the one you have such a nice little floral yeah. design. Yeah, I've had this for a really long time. I can't even remember what collection this came from, but I'm I'm like you. I'm a sucker for Tierra cast and I love a button. Like I'll take a button over a, a bead for a clasp any day. Uh, I just feel like it's so convenient. And if they're beautiful like that one, it makes it even better. So Aren't look at the these little things. Buttons or beads? Yep, buttons are definitely beads. Look at how they fit together. Like that's this is so. Why I'm, obsessed with them. I'm so yes. glad we're on the same wavelength. <laughs> yeah, like that's so. It's just it's the gratification of lining those all up and then fitting right into each other. Yeah, that's. It's like a little love fest of beads. They're all hugging. And if folks caught the sneak peek photo of the designs, Sarah also used those in the earring design she came up with and used those in like almost like a fringe. Yeah. yeah. It was beautiful. Has your week been particularly busy? What's what's the what's the Sarah Lovecraft world this week? Oh my gosh. So this week has been it's been kind of crazy because at the beginning of this week I was sick. Um I I didn't mention it at the time except over on hardwired, but I had uh I had a really nasty bout of food poisoning at the end of the weekend that I needed at least one day to recover from. So Monday, I didn't really work. Monday is like my my big production day to get mm -hmm. a good jump start on the week. And I missed all of Monday. Oh, so no. yeah, I at the very last minute was able to, you know, to get a, a project ready for my regular Tuesday live and my hardwired live, but I was just not feeling it at the beginning of the week. So my week started out kind of slow, but I had to, I had to power through because it's been a busy one. I had uh, my two lives on Tuesday. I had my Michael's class on Wednesday. Um, I worked on kits yesterday and today I had a live, a regular feel good Friday live, a hardwired live, 
and a live here. And then I have a Michael's class tomorrow. Like I don't have time to do anything. <laughs> it's a lot, Sarah. <laughs> it, it is a whole lot. And next week I have, I'm, I'm also in the middle of all this. I'm planning a, a surprise party for somebody. And so I have to, I have to actually do some of next week's work this weekend so that I can surprise party next week. Like my life is, it, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> You're, it's just, You're a rock star. I don't know how you, go, go, how you go. I know. It's crazy. So I've thread all of my little peanuts on here. And like I said, I don't know how many there are. That's not really the point. The point is that I'm going to make a loop with these that's going to be big enough to accommodate my button, but just, just enough. Okay. You want it to be just enough. If you make it too big, it, your button's going to slide off and your, your bracelet's never going to stay on. So you want to find like that happy that happy medium in there where it's just snug enough for your button, but still easy to get on and off. So take all of those beads and you just want to move those to the middle of your piece of your nylon. So now you're going to tie an overhanded knot and you can do a surgeon's knot or you can just do a regular knot where you just loop it through once. Just make sure that your beads don't get caught up in it. My beads always like to try to sneak into my knot. And before I pull this down tight, I'm going to grab my beading all just so that I can make sure that I get that knot exactly where I want it to be. And then pull and you've got yourself a loop. So the part of our clasp is already ready to go. And now we have two strands to work with. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is we want to thread on these guys. I'm going to thread on my little dragonfly bead first, and I'm only going to thread him onto one of the pieces of the nylon cord. Um, he, if I had, if I had pre-stiffened the ends of my nylon cord, I could probably get both threads through the bead. But since I didn't do that ahead of time, I don't want to fight with it. I'm only going to thread this onto one of the two cords and the other cord is going to sit on the back. So thread this on. I notice you're not stretching the cord. Is that because you don't need to stretch nylon cord like silk cord? Yeah, you don't. You, um, I've never had it stretch on me after I've made a design. Um, I'm sure that there are people out there that would argue that you always need to stretch everything, but I, I never pre-stretch. Yeah, that's why I mean, that's why I always hear about nylon. So I was curious what your approach for it was. I've never really, I've never noticed that it comes, that it stretches afterwards. But to be fair, I've never used super heavy beads on it. And I think that that makes a difference as well. So if you're going to use heavy beads, you probably want to stretch it a little bit. But I don't, I don't, I don't tend to mess with stretching anything. So it's just on one of the cords. The other cord's going to come to the back. And I don't, I'm not mad about it. Some no, people that it's going to bug people. It doesn't bother me at all. It's just an addition of color there, you know. And then I'm going to bring the two ends together and I'm just going to tie another overhanded knot to put that bead in its spot. And again, I'm going to bring in the beading all just because it's helpful. Okay, so there's that one. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the other one. And I'm just gonna thread it on to one of the nylon cords. The nylon cord, the thing about it is, is that it will fray. So you you do wanna make sure that if you are not gonna pre-treat the end of it, I never pre-treat the end of it, even though I tell people to. Um, that you've got enough of it that you can cut off if it starts to fray really bad. So to, to treat the ends of it, there are a couple of things that you can do. You can either dip it down into some um, uh, super glue and let it sit and it'll harden like a needle. That'll keep it from fraying and it'll make it really easy to go into your beads. You can use clear nail polish. You can use wax. Um, Gilder's paste will work as well, as long as it's not a color. So you've got options as far as, um, how to stiffen up your nylon cord cord if you if you plan that far in advance. I always plan in advance, but I never think to stiffen my cord. So I always just cut more than I need so that I can cut some of it off. So I'm doing the same thing here. I've got that cord running down the back 
of my bead. And I'm just gonna do another overhanded knot. Okay. And now you can have them alternate with the, the purple cord if you want to, like one going one way and one going the other way, or you can, I really just let it kind of do whatever it wants to do, to be honest with you. I do consider that the back where the cord is, but mm -hmm. you know, it, it's a bracelet. It's going to do its own thing. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some of these awesome lava beads. These are so pretty, by the way. These have been the unexpected favorite, I think. Everyone's talking about the lava beads. Yeah, they're they're fabulous. They're absolutely fabulous. And again, this is a situation where if you can get both cords through them, go for it. Um, or you can do them the exact same way that I did these. I really want to be able to thread both cords, but I don't know. I don't know how long my nylon will hold up for that at the ends. We'll, we'll see. I'm just afraid it'll go to, well, there we go. It worked right off the, right off the bat there. And then I'm just going to tie another knot. So all I'm doing in between all of this stuff is just creating knots and you don't even have to, you can just straight string all of this stuff onto the nylon and knot it at the end if you want to. But I'm kind of partial to knots, particularly when it's in a pretty color like this, because it just kind of adds to the design overall. For those that haven't done knotting in the past, could you do it like a super uh, detailed knot for us? Yeah. So there's there's actually several different ways that you can create knots with your nylon. I'm just doing a really simple overhanded knot with mine. I'll show you how to do that. But if you've got a knotter tool like the hand knotter, which is my favorite, you can use the hand knotter tool to do this as well. Um, I just find that showing people with an awl is really easy because even if you don't have an awl, you can use like a, um, you can use a pin, like a T pin or something like that. You can find something that will, that will work. Uh, I never want you to feel like you have to go out and buy a tool, but mm -hmm. I would be doing this normally with my hand knotter. So all I'm doing is I'm just taking the beads, threading them on. This is a double cord so I have to make sure that both cords stay as even as possible when I'm creating my knot, but I'm just looping them over my fingers and then I'm just looping it through once. So I don't even do like a surgeon's knot where I loop it through twice or anything. I feel like with a double cord like this, just an overhanded knot um, is, is enough for this. You don't have to, you don't have to get crazy or anything. And no. then I just, stick Sorry, the all in the in the loop and then pull it down and it really kind of helps if you've got more than one cord i pulled this one down too too far away but it helps if you've got more than one cord to get both cords to pull them down evenly i feel like the thing i struggled the most when i was first trying knotting with danielle was placing the knot exactly where i wanted it yeah well, well that's scissors, I think at the time I haven't tried the knotting station yet and I know that's yeah. your go-to oh yeah yeah it makes it makes life so much easier you don't like I and I have the utmost respect for using the tweezers and a beading all because that's the traditional way to knot things and that's like one of the oldest ways of jewelry making ever so I definitely appreciate it for what it is but if there's a tool that can make it easier for me I'm all about it so I use the hand knotter tool. I'll show you what it looks like. I use this for, for all of my knotting. So if I'm doing pearls or gemstones or whatever, this is, this is what I use. I don't like to use it on double cords as much. That's why I'm just kind of hand knotting this one on top of the fact that you can use an awl instead. But um, I hand knotting with the knotter tool is one of my favorite techniques ever. It's also one of my very favorite techniques to teach. We're Yeah. I, Rachel, Sarah, Sarah and I have chatted about her love of, of the hand knotter and like, yeah, and Sarah's like, I loved your ideas about really using with some of the nice gems of the shop. So I am, I'm am all for that. Oh yeah. Well, it's such a, it's such a great skill to learn. And what's really cool about it is, is that you can learn like the traditional technique with Danielle. Then you can come and learn the, um, 
the hand knotter technique with me and you can, you, you know, you can consider yourself a master if you would like, you know, what I mean? like, I don't mm -hmm. know. I just, I just feel like there, if you're going to use the tool, that's great, but you definitely need the appreciation for like the traditional, if you're a jewelry nerd, I'm kind of a jewelry nerd. So I'm all into like the history and all of that weird stuff, but. Uh, we have a question. What was the exact sizing of the, of that cord? You know what? I'm not entirely sure. I know that it's teeny beeny. I would say maybe 0.5 millimeter, but I don't know for sure. It might even be smaller than that. Okay. I really, I really don't know. Is it kind of the general rule of thumb, similar to other cords where you could kind of want to use the thickest cord you can yep. for, for the beads you're using? Yeah. Yeah. That's always a good, no matter what you're using, that's always a good rule to go by. And I do know that the S lawn and the C lawn comes in different sizes. The B lawn doesn't, it comes in just one size. Um, but I, I never, I never really shop for it by size. I honestly always just shop for it by color. Does it come in just like a crazy number of colors? I'm just not oh. even aware of. Yes. It comes in every color of the rainbow and, and then some, like yeah. I have, a, I have a crazy collection of it. You did just tell me you love hot pink and now I, now I see it. <laughs> bit just a little and it, like this it's the only pink that I that and like the soft pinks but like Pepto Bismol pink and like bubblegum pink no I'm not that that is not my thing but this electric pink is yes it's giving <laughs> me all of the summer vibes right now okay so something that I want to mention about this is I'm just kind of beating along I've only added five of these lava beads to this bracelet overall my bracelet's going to be about seven maybe close to seven and a quarter inches. Um, <clears throat> if you want to add length to this, this bracelet, the lava beads is the place to do it. So you've got two opportunities, really. You can add an extra lava bead here, or you can make your chain. When we get to the chain part, you can make it a little bit longer. But um, just as far as like the beads are concerned, if you want a bead opportunity to add another one, this is the place to do it. It's going to give you, you know, another half inch worth of length to your bracelet. So I've knotted all of this together. So we're more than halfway through our bracelet. So we're going to move on and transition into our chain. Now, the chain that I have picked is just like a larger link chain. You don't even have to do this. You can just link together some jump rings if you want to. It's really up to you. And I'm just kind of treating it like a cha-cha style bracelet where every other link I'm going to put a wire wrapped bead on either side of it and that's going to kind of fill in you can fill this in with every you can fill in every single link if you want to but I kept mine kind of open spaced I four of them are already done we're going to do four of them together but before we get to that point we need to get this to a, a spot where we can transition into something else so what we're going to do is we're just going to take a jump ring here and you know what I'm not even going to use the jump ring I'm going to use I'm just going to tie directly to my chain here right. so I've, I've got one link of chain here at the end and I'm going to take my cords together just we're just going to do a regular knot we're just going to knot onto that last link of chain so I'm going to bring this down hold on I love that you don't even need one of the, like, the crimp ends. Nope. Just knots. Knots are, you know, like, it just takes me back to a simpler time. Like, because I made macrame jewelry in high school, and knots are just as good as anything else. So I'm going to do an overhanded knot. And I'm going to make it big, kind of loop away from... You don't have to pull everything down and try to work in that tiny little space. You can work out here and then pull everything back in. So again, I'm going to bring my beading all in and just pull that knot up as close as I can get it and then take the beading all out and cinch it down. Now, if you want to add a little bit of glue to this, you can just a little dab of hypo cement will do. You don't have to, but like I said in the beginning, the nylon cord's a little bit slippery. So if you do add a little drop of glue, you just get a little extra insurance that it's not, it's not going to undo on you. 
I don't think it's necessary to add the hypo cement to all of your knots, but at the end, it's not a bad idea. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Oh, oh I'm not the only, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were making a pun. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> I'm also just over here admiring the secret genius of this bracelet because <laughs> You've actually managed to make a cord bracelet adjustable. How? Because by using a non, I think it was a non-soldered chain. Oh, yeah. Yep. You, or yep, yep, even yep. if it was soldered, like you could easily use that to adjust the bracelet for someone like on the spot. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Just take a link off and you're good to go or add a link to it or whatever you've got to do. Because so, usually that's not the case with this sort of style. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So you're really kind of committed to your length. So this this makes it a little bit easier to, to switch it up a, a bit. So right here, for me personally, it's an opportunity to add dangles. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. I'm one of those people who I have to have extra everything. Um, so <laughs> I do, I do want to put some little dangles here before I cut off my cord. Now, if you don't want to do that, you want to let this glue dry at least 12 hours and then cut and cut as close to the knot as possible but not until you let the glue dry and that was also a little bit punny but you know <laughs> so I'm going to thread on one of these beads because they're so just to get you some of those some pastel nail polish that matches the, the like the colors of that strand. Oh, yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes, please. I did. I did remember. I did mention to you that I dream of one day doing a live where I paint my nails for the first time with you. That would be so awesome. Oh my gosh. Yes. I'm on it. I'm on it. You just name the time, and I'll grab. I'll grab the plane ticket. We could do it virtually. We could do it whatever we want. <laughs> But That's I would love true, but I'm person. still just looking for an opportunity to just come out there. So I mean, <laughs> if, it's, if it's to paint nails, then that's what I'm doing. Okay. So <laughs> I'm going to tie knots on the ends of these to hold these little beads on here. And I am going to do a surgeon's knot with this. So a surgeon's knot is the exact same thing as a regular overhanded knot, except that you are going to loop over twice. So let me show you. I'm going to loop over my fingers the same time. It's just once. But then when I go to loop my end, I'm going to loop it through one time and then I'm going to loop it through another time. Now what this does is it just creates a little bit more of a chunky knot, which makes it a little bit bigger so that your bead doesn't slip over it. It kind of makes like a faux barrel knot, if you will. See, it makes just like a bigger a bigger little knot there. A bigger little knot. I have no a idea what is happening. Knot. <laughs> and then I'm just going to <laughs> So I've got a little dangle here. This one's a little long, but that's okay. I'm not mad about it. I All dangles are good dangles in my book. And then I'm going to do the same thing <laughs> to the other one. And this one can be the same. It can be a little bit shorter. Like it's totally up to you. Once we're done with that step, we've got a good question from Cindy asking about if you ever have a like a clogged hole for a bead, what is your go-to? So I the very first thing I'll do is I grab my beading all just because it has a tiny little end on it. And if that doesn't work, I get my bead reamer out. Now people will fuss at me. Um, so my bead reamer has the, um, the wire rounder tip on it at the moment, but normally it has the bead, the bead reamer tip on it. Here's the thing. Okay. You're supposed to use this underwater when you have the bead reamer tip on it, you're supposed to drill, you know, you're supposed to clean out the holes of your beads underwater, but let's be honest. I don't know if I'm working along and I've got like one check glass bead that has the hole is clogged. I'm not going to go get a bowl of water just for that. I'm just not. I'm being honest with you. Let's we're real. We live in the real world. The real world says I don't have time for any of that. I'm just going to stick the bead reamer in there and push the button a couple of times and knock out whatever's in there. Mm -hmm. You just don't want to hold on to it so long that it heats up in your fingers and burns you. That's the only reason that water is involved in the first place. Um, but that's what I would do. Beading all, all, uh, uh, yes, words are hard. <laughs> all first, bead reamer second, if I can't get it out with this guy. Okay. But honestly, a safety pin will work just as well. <laughs> 
Yeah, sometimes I just grab wire too. If it's like, if I have a thin yeah. wire, I'll be able to dislodge it just with a piece of wire. Yep. All right, so I'm going to lay this out. I'm going to pull the chain out here yeah. so that you can kind of see like the placement of where these beads are going to go on this chain. So maybe get it to lay flat. So the chain with the large links or jump rings or whatever you're using. So I'm going to go every other link and I'm going to put a bead on one side and then a bead on the other side. You don't have to do it that way. That's like traditional cha-cha style. Um, you can put all your beads on the same side if you want to. You don't have to have one on either side, but I kind of like it because it makes everything a little bit more balanced. And again, I'm skipping a link. You don't have to skip a link if you want to. You can fill up every single link. It's it's up to you. But because this is already attached, we do have to like hold the entire bracelet in our hand as we're doing the wire wrapping. So it may be for you, if you're doing this project, that you want to do this part first, just so you don't have to hold on and work with all of this stuff in your hand. But it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my beautiful little check glass, lustery, purple, yummy beads here. And I'm going to put those on head pins and I'm going to wire wrap those directly to the chains. And if I wanted to, if I wanted to cheat, I could open up those chain links and slip these on. But I, I don't want to cheat. I want to I want to play by the rules. So I'm going to wire wrap them directly. Not using jump rings just because I feel like it already has so much movement and an addition of a jump ring is going to make the beads hang that much further away mm -hmm. from the chain. So wire wrapping directly on is my is my choice for this one. So I'm going to do these one at a time. Four of them are already ready so that I can save a little bit of time because this is a little bit time consuming. But I'm going to start my wire wrap out here. So I'm holding uh, it with the chain nose pliers right where the wire is exiting the bead. I'm going to bend the wire over the top of the pliers. That way I've got that space that's already ready for the wraps. I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers, taking the wire up and over the top barrel of the pliers, rotate so that I can take the wire over to the other side. Now, before I do the wire wraps, I'm going to come in with my chain nose pliers. I'm going to open just a little bit. That makes a huge difference. It makes it a whole lot easier to attach this to this kind of thick chain instead of having to wiggle with it forever. So I'm going to take the tail end of the wire and I'm going to stick it through the link. And then it'll just fall right into the loop that we created. I'm going to grab that with my bent chain nose pliers to keep the pliers out of the way. And then I'm going to wire wrap can't have a Sarah without a nice, perfect wire wrap loop. <laughs> yeah, I, I when I was doing this project, I was like, now, where am I going to put the wire? Where am I going to do? Because I just can't. I have to. I, I just have to do it. I think the, the wiggles come from the wire. <laughs> okay, we're going to do another one. So up and over. Rotate, take the wire over to the other side. And again, just kind of treat it like a jump ring. You just want to give it a little twist to open it up just a little bit. And then on that same link of chain, just over here on the opposite side is where this one's going to go. I'm just going to slide that in. And then we will wire wrap again. Do you see what folks are scheming in the comments? I cannot see any comments. So I have absolutely no idea what's happening in the world right now. New show from Shira Dawson, a show creator. <laughs> Sarah travels, gives a beater a makeover, and then shows <laughs> how to make a fabulous piece of jewelry. <laughs> and then oh. Jesse's already named it. Beauty and Beads, like dinner and a movie, <laughs> but better. Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Okay, Sam's first, and then Jesse's next. <laughs> Then we're going to Shira's and <laughs> you're going to whole school to... California. We're ready for you. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. We got to go to Danielle's. We got to go to Danielle's too. Oh okay, my gosh. Okay, I'll road trip up to Seattle with you. Oh my gosh. And so we have to do some, we have to do snack shenanigans as we travel, right? <laughs> so like in between, while we're on the road, we have to stop and do snack shenanigans because 
yes. I don't know what they have to eat in Seattle that's weird, but I'm willing to find out. Oh my gosh, Sarah, I have a story directly related to the snack shenanigans. <laughs> yeah. This happened this week. I was looking for like some different can possible candies for like future bead boxes in the shop, just like trying to see what was out there. Yeah. Ordered a couple samples, got some things. And the site had like candies from different decades. Yeah. It was like a box, a mixed box of different candies from different decades. And I was looking at them. I was like, wait, wait, wait. This would be so fun for a snack shenanigans to go through some old timey box of candies. Oh, that would be awesome. And I like turned to Rachel. I was like, okay, what, what would be like the candies of like Sarah's teen years? <laughs> oh, she's, in her, she's like in her like thirties. Right. And <laughs> And Rachel's like, you have no idea how old anyone is, right? Like, no, absolutely not. That's right, right? <laughs> I played the fifth, Sam. I played the fifth. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure you're 32. Okay, sure. I love it. I'm 32. <laughs> That's perfect. Yes. I, I wasn't even, I, I, without second thought, I was like, Sarah's, sure, Sarah's like 32, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah. Sure. Me being oblivious, I don't know anything, but that's. Oh, gosh. That's what I believe. Um, well, that works for me. Do I look? Do I look thirty-two? Yes. I'll take it. Okay, perfect. Yep. <laughs> that's that's my new age. <laughs> it's funny because I just got through telling my. I've got some friends that I call my designated drivers, not for drinking purposes, but for life purposes. Like they're my drivers for life because I make bad decisions on my own. So anyway. Um, I was telling them that, like, I'm totally ignoring my birthday this year. Like, we're just going to pretend like it doesn't even exist. <laughs> I'm, there is no birthday this year. <laughs> birthday was so celebratory. I know, but this year I have to, I'm ignoring it. We're just pretending like it's not a thing. I just magically, I just magically appear. I spawned. I magically spawned. No birthday. <laughs> Okay, so now I have two other things to add to this. Now, of course, we talked about you can add links here if you wanted to add other beads, or you can add links here if you want to add chain. You just want to add some more beads to that. Now, I didn't use all of these beads. I just want to show you guys. Like, there are still a ton of these left. So if you wanted to do every single link with these beads on it, you absolutely could, and it would be really full and beautiful. But I'm going to leave mine just like it is. So I'm going to attach the button to this and I'm just going to keep it as easy as possible. I'm just using the jump ring. That's all. I'm not doing anything super special. I'm just going to take a jump ring, open, thread that on. And then I'm just going to thread it through the shank on the back of the button. And we're going to call that done as far as the clasp is concerned. And you can see it's going to go just like that. Oh my goodness. Super, super cute. But now I have to have more because more is more. And <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to add our little butterfly, our, our dragonfly rather to this as well. So I'm going to open up another jump ring and I'm going to put him down here on this end where the dragonfly goes. Couldn't possibly just have one dragonfly. Yeah. You have to have multiple, multiple. More is more. <laughs> Haven't I taught you anything? More is more. Less <laughs> is a bore. <laughs> So there's our little bracelet. Hooray! Oh, it's so cute. I love that it's kind of color blocked, that the two yeah. coins are kind of in a similar color vein. You've got your like metallic, lovely sparkles. Then you have your purples. It's perfect. Yeah. Super, super cute. So, so cute. You want me to do an earring really quickly before we go? You want to? I can. I'll do it really fast because I'm if you got. It. I think we're yeah. all here for it. We, we're. I'm no rush. I know, but I would like you to be able to start your weekend soon. I'm. I'm. I'm good with it. I'm good with it. I mean, the reality is my weekend is not going to start until after my Michael's class is over tomorrow. So, I mean, it's all good. It's all good. Okay, so a really quick, super quick earring to go with this, like super, super quick. Okay, is we're gonna take these little star beads. We're just gonna take one, and we're gonna take an ear wire and a jump ring. And if you've got leftover cord where we cut it, this is a great use for the leftover cord. So I'm going to take the cord, I'm going to thread it through a jump ring, bring the ends together, and again, tie an overhanded knot because everything in today's project is about overhanded knots. You know what? I feel like this cord might be a little short, but that's okay. We'll make it work. I'm going to tie it and I want to tie it right up next to the jump ring. 
or not. <laughs> that's how that's how it usually goes for my knots. I'm gonna well, I'm gonna cut a little bit more cord here just so that I don't mess this up. Okay, let's try this again. Cords cord ends together, thread on your jump ring. Okay, overhanded knot. And you just want to bring that down right next to the jump ring. And pull down. Okay. Now we're going to thread on one of these star beads. And if it will go on both pieces of your nylon, great. If it won't, do just like we did with the bracelet. And just thread it onto one. Pick the side that is the easiest. There we go. Okay, take the other piece or the other to the back. And again, another overhanded knot. Like these are so quick and easy. If you need a quick set, this is this is really, really easy. And if you want something different than wire, I mean, because you could do this with wire, but sometimes it's fun to change things up. So, all right, not on the top, not on the bottom. We're going to go ahead and add our ear wire to the top just to remind ourselves that we're almost done. <laughs> <laughs> it's the easy one sometimes. All right, now I'm just going to take a couple of these little peanut beads and you don't have to use a bunch of them. Let's do three on each on each strand just to kind of tie this metallic in so that it matches. Right. So that it is a is definitely a set here. So I'm just going to thread on three of the little peanuts if I can get them onto the cord. If not, I may have to trim some of the cord. Oh no, this is what happens when I get in a hurry. It's like, eh, well, all those things that were going smoothly before. Sarah's are not... us. Well, it's been an hour though. I feel like I need to let everybody get on with their life. You know, like everybody's seen enough of me today. I feel like. I'm <laughs> thankful for every minute. And you know, that's, a, that's a narrative you've created. <laughs> At the same time, I would also love, of course, want to respect your time. So. It's totally up to you. Well, we're making these earrings one way or another, so. Buckle up, buttercup. <laughs> we're here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so three of the little peanut beads, and then with this tiny little leftover tail here, I'm just going to tie a little knot just to make sure that they stay. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the other one. And that's literally, that's it. Like, just a few little peanut beads on the ends of your cord and a knot and call it done. So you've got that little, you've got that little bit of metallic sparkle. You've got a little bit of wiggle with the movement and you've still got the purple. So it matches the bracelet. I, this is might be my new favorite earring design. I've actually never seen this. I don't know how. They're just, and that's it. They're done. And they're just so lightweight and fun to wear. And you can make the dangles as long as you want them to be. You can add more beads to them, whatever you want to do. Trim them up. They're so lightweight. That's my, that's my thing for, I'm telling you for summertime, I just don't want heavy jewelry. I'm just not a hot weather person. And the more layers you add, whether it's jewelry or clothes, the hotter I get. So if I can keep my jewelry airy and light and mm -hmm. still be in style, you know, and still have like, you know, a put together set of something that I feel really good. So this definitely something I would wear like, you know, with my blue jeans or I would dress it up, and put on my sandals and go to, you know, a party or something. It works both ways. And it's lightweight and fun. Earrings are super cool. I'm going to turn you around. Wanda's hoping for the length of the final bracelet based on the beads you use. I got you. All right. So I undo the bracelet and I stretch it out here. The total length on this is seven and a quarter. So it's not quite seven and a half inches. Mm -hmm. But if I had added one more of those lava beads or maybe one more link of the chain, that would have put me right in the seven and a half to seven and three quarters uh, area, which is pretty common for bracelets. So mm -hmm. it's a little on the short side, but you very easily could fix that. Yeah. And it's then, such a great design. <laughs> this is what it looks like. 
I feel like you just like made you made me this made me love the box even more. <laughs> just getting to see something so special come from it. There's like that that makes me so that was very special to see, Sarah. Oh, thanks, Sarah. I appreciate you. And it's it really does. I feel like I, I didn't think of it the way that you thought of it. Like it really does have that boho travels kind of feel. It is very a boho bracelet, you know? And I didn't really notice it before you said that, but it does. It really kind of embodies the entire theme and really puts that color palette to use. But there's still so many other beads and colors that are available in this box. So you could do this in a different color if you wanted to with the same beads that are in the box instead of using the electroplated uh lava beads you could use the um you could use the road or the yeah. the rhodonite you could use any of these you could use the blues instead of the purples and you could do the same thing yeah i often think like it's really <laughs> to make some like mini palettes from each bead box yeah because we don't we try not to do it as just like one color thing because it just it doesn't it's more so much more interesting to have a bit more variance <sighs> Oh my gosh. Aren't they cute? They're just fun, lightweight, and you could make those in a million different colors with all of your favorite little check glass beads. Yeah. That's such a great feature because you could use like any shape to do that. You could do, yeah. do almost any bead. Yep. It's a great design. I was thinking that one of like the main aspects of like boho design is often like the layering of different textures that often like you wouldn't put together. Yeah. And that bracelet, because you used, oh my, because it's basically mixed media of sorts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Using the chain and then using the cord, you've layered texture and again, have been a, a secret genius without even. <laughs> That's my superpower. <laughs> Sarah's just over genius. here. It's so secret, even I don't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> kind <laughs> well that's my favorite line of the week um, <laughs> oh my goodness okay we've got a few a couple quick announcements I, both about i saw there's a sale going on your page and we got a couple now of a sale going on the on the site that i can tell folks about and then we can wrap up i think sounds good yeah yeah so jesse is over in the office today and created a code during this live that anyone here can get a uh, $5 discount on any order placed on the website. So that'd be like the Sam's Bead Shop main website. Yeah. So use code SARA5, S-A-R-A number five, and you can get $5 oh. on a $50 order through Sunday. There's sale one on Sarah's Etsy shop, which is 13 Crows Studios. So it's just shop slash 13 Crows. It is 13 okay. Crows Studio, but all you have to type in is 13 Crows and it'll take you there. Okay. Yeah. I saw you having a 40% off sale on your maker mixes. Yeah, which is huge because I never, I never do 40% off. Like that's like, that's, that's really good. That's drawing the line into like crazy territory for me. But um, yeah, I'm trying to move the maker mixes out so that I can bring some new ones in because I've got some fresh new beads and some new ideas and new things for the summertime and want to get some of those moved out of the way because space i don't got a lot of that around here so, so y'all better go take advantage of sarah's spring cleaning sale yes that's yes yes crazy i don't think i've ever seen you do such a that sort of deal that's that's really good yeah and do you it's need a, a big coupon one. for that so you don't have to use a coupon etsy automatically takes that off for you at the end um when you go to check out you'll be able to see it if you don't there's a problem with etsy just let me know but it will take it off for you as you shop um, and it's only good through Monday. So if you, if you go on Tuesday to try to get your 40% off, you're out mm -hmm. of luck. So don't wait. <laughs> nice. And then I guess the last code I should mention is that Sarah has a code for Sam's Bead Box. And folks should definitely use that code because it helps throw some love Sarah's way. And Sarah works very hard. And we always want to send more love for any love we can her way. So if you use... Just Sarah's first name, S-A-R-A, -A, on samsbeadbox.com. You can get $5 off your first Sam's Bead box. <laughs> box. <laughs> and you, your first box will be the June one, which is looking really, really pretty. We've been working on it. So lots of things to take advantage of today. And yep. now you have two designs to try also. So folks might be busy this weekend, Sarah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and we're not done, right? We're going to get together on Tuesday over on Sarah Lovecraft Designs. We're going to play some more with this box. So what's left over with the beads, we're going to make something else. 
I'm going to have Wi-Fi finally on Tuesday in my new place. Yeah. So if you want me to join you in any some be be to be to be to beating. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. would be more than happy to because I I haven't gotten to do a ton of beating yet. Yes, please. I'm having my whole setup ready now finally. Yes, yes, yes. I love it when we beat together. So me yes, too. please. Yes. Okay, you're on. Cool. Oh, Sarah, <sighs> I feel three times as good as I did an hour ago. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So I got my I feel, Sam fixed to make me to get me through the weekend until Tuesday. I know we just we need to schedule these more consistently because I can't just start craving it. I just need it. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, gateway drug. <laughs> oh God, uh, why am I so far away? <laughs> I know it's just not fair. It's just not fair. But I'm. I, I've already told you I can move. I can move and I can buy a plane ticket anytime. You just tell me when and I'll be there. So I I'll come you. paint your fingernails and I put a mud mask on you. And <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone, this has been a blast. Sarah, you're the friggin' best. No, you um, are. <laughs> no. I never made a little, I was thinking about like when I was like trying to talk about Sarah on a stream. Often I realize Sarah then just starts turning at the direction. I'm like, no, no, I'm trying to talk about Sarah. <laughs> this is a lot of me. <laughs> it's so hard think, for me to take a compliment, but I'm getting better at it. So you are good at. I think you've gotten very good at it. Yeah, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> well, everyone, have a lovely weekend, Sarah. Have yes. a lovely weekend. You too. We'll, we'll see you Tuesday. That's. I guess so I, I mean, with you Tuesday morning and then we have the Beadbox Live. So it's going to be a busy day. Let's yes, do it. Yes, it is. Sounds good. I'll see good. everyone Tuesday. Yep. All righty.